Don't go buy that bit, Lee. Wait till after you close. Don't go buy that jet ski. Wait till after you close. Don't go buy some bundles on payment arrangements <laughs> because you need to wait till after you close. Like you guys probably get the gist. What's up beautiful people? This is your girl Nikki. Welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys all about like the beginning phases of becoming a homeowner. In my previous video I mentioned that to you guys and you seem really interested. So I'm here today with this video and giving you guys five tips on how to start the process to become a homeowner in 2021 and 2020. Okay sis, so I hope you have you like a glass of wine, your pen and your notebook, and we're gonna go ahead and jump into these five tips. But before I get started, I wanted to shout out. So the lashes that I have on today, you guys, are by this amazing YouTuber. Her name is Courtney B here on YouTube. She's an amazing woman. She has a heart of gold and her content is amazing. This is the packaging, you guys. It's super, super sleek. I love it. It has the gold and black two of my favorite colors. Um, the lashes that I have on are her signature lashes and they are called Tiffany. I'm also wearing her The Gilded Gloss and this is in the shade Naked on my lips today. So you guys go ahead, check the description box. I'll leave her YouTube channel and her link to her website. Go ahead, let her know in the comment section that I sent you. Okay, you guys, so this process is not going to be easy. Let me just go ahead and say that. It's going to be tedious. The market is absolutely bananas right now, okay? Everybody named mama, auntie, cousin, everybody is buying a house. And, you know, your girl is on the bandwagon too. So I'm just going to give you guys the five tips to help you get started in this process because one of your comments really stood out to me. You were just like, look, sis, I don't even know where to start. So I got you. I got you. Get your, get your wine, get your blue pen and a notebook, and I got you. Okay, so tip number one is your mindset. Sis, you have to get your mindset in order. You have to set your intentions. Really get serious about your goals to become a homeowner. You can't let any outside noise dictate you from making this purchase or swaying you left and right. You can't allow somebody to say, Girl, well, I think you should wait. The market is crazy. Or you really should save up some more money so you can go live in this state or down in this city because it's better over here. Or just stop them where they at because everybody is not going to be out there for your best interest everybody's not going to want to see you win and i mean some people are, may just be a little bit scared to take that leap of faith like you're doing so you have to just stop them where they at and just know that i got this i'm going to get my house i have my non-negotiables i have my must-haves i have my you know i can kind of settle you without really need to sit yourself down and get your blue ink pen get your paper write down your must-haves look at your family size what is it that you really need like assess your necessities right you want to look at do i need a three bedroom house do, can i go with a two do i need a four or five how many bedrooms do you really really need like you need to write that down do you want a backyard do you really want a garage is a basement a necessity for you is the um price that you are willing to pay a non-negotiable because the mortgage lender is going to sell you a mortgage right they're not going to look at affordability that's your job to do you have to look at it and say hey they gave me five hundred thousand, but i know that my pockets i want to be comfortable so i'm only going to take out four hundred thousand dollars i'm going to look at cheaper homes so that my mortgage is not crazy high and i don't have enough money to do things that i enjoy to do or save towards my retirement or make those purchases that you know require require a big chunk of change you know what i mean so you really want to set your mindset and be intentional when you're doing this set a time frame for when you think you want to close on your house like be really specific i know for myself my time frame is august of next year that's when i really want to make sure that i'm already in my home okay or closing in that month one or the other i'm trying my best to be realistic because the market right now is mad crazy like houses are like gone the next on the market one day gone the next so i have to be realistic but i really want to make sure that i'm in my home prior to the kids starting school so that i can use the address so they can go to those schools in that district wherever i may be okay um so you want to make sure that you're being intentional i don't want to keep going on and on but get your mindset together write down your non-negotiables your wants your must have write all that stuff down and make it really really specific and clear all right moving on to number two this is where we get down and serious into this so let me take a sip of wine because sis it's about to get real in depth and we just need to nourish our bodies with this wine hold on okay you guys your credit score 
is king. I don't care what anybody tells you. I, I don't care. You have to get your finances in order. So number two is assess your finances. So what you want to do firsthand is go to annualcreditreport.com and know this is not sponsored at all, um, but you need to pull your credit report and look to see what's on there so that you can determine if you need to delete some stuff, you need to settle some debt, you need to pay some debt, you need to um, dispute something. You need to know what's on your credit report because you can be denied just off your credit report alone when you have too much stuff going on. So you definitely want to check that. Another website that I recommend, and I highly recommend this one only because it gives you a side-by-side -side comparison, um, but they do charge a fee. The name of this website is called smartcredit.com, and I'll go ahead and link it down here so that you guys have the exact spelling um, for this website. So this website currently at the time of me filming this video, they are offering the credit report for $1 for a seven day trial. So you can easily go on there, put in your identifying information, date of birth, name, all that stuff, get your credit report. And then you don't have to continue with the subscription. I'm just saying, don't come for me if they pull that $29.95 out of your account because you chose not to cancel. I'm just giving you an option because if you go to annual credit report, you'll have to pull all three and then have all these three different, if it's 10 pages or whatever, you have 30 pages you have to go through. Smart Credit will give it all to you right there, side by side comparisons. I found that to be very helpful when I was like going through, trying to see, did they report this accurately? Did I pay that off and they still reporting? I was able to look at all three all at once and then make my dispute letters from there. So I highly recommend Smart Credit. It's not sponsored, but you know, I'll have the link down in the description box. So we're still kind of in number two. The next thing within number two, as far as your finances goes, you must check your DTI. Your DTI is your debt to income ratio. It has to be in order. If your debt to income ratio is crazy, you're not gonna qualify, period. You're just not. They really recommend that you're at 31% front end and 41% back end. Bottom line, I know FHA is a little bit um, more um, flexible. They have, I think, 43 at max, but you still need to make sure that your debt to income ratio is good. The way that you can do that, you can Google um, DTI calculators, list all of your debts. That could be your car note, your student loan debts, your uh, credit cards for myself, child support. I don't know what your situation is. You know, go through all of your stuff, find out what your debts are. That's why the credit report checking is number one, because you need to see what's on your credit report. Then you're able to check your DTI. 31% front end, 41 41 to 43% back in max, okay? Um, so check your DTI. If you don't know about DTI, you guys comment down below. I can go a little bit more in depth into this, these topics, but I'm just trying to give you a quick broad overview on the five things that I recommend you doing to get started with becoming a homeowner in 2021, 2022. So lastly, before I move on to number three is just giving you guys a good idea about what your credit score should be. And also kind of piggybacking off of like 2A is that going to annualcreditreport.com and smart credit will, will not give you your credit score. You have to go to another website, which is like myfico.com and those costs, like you have to pay to get your credit score. So, um, and then of course you have Credit Karma that you can kind of get an idea please know that Credit Karma is not going to be the um, number, the FICO number that the mortgage lenders are going to use. So of course you want to kind of um, assess that as well before you get started. But a good credit score um, minimum would be about 620. 600 is the cre minimum credit score for FHA loan, um, but you also want to provide that little bit of wriggle room because you're going to be getting some hard increase. Now, when you're shopping for your mortgage, you need to know that you have the ability to shop for a mortgage within the 30-day window and only have one hard inquiry. And it won't, everyone else won't affect you. So if you go to five different locations, only that one time will be um, hit your credit report to kind of drop your score. So a good rule of thumb is to get kind of everything ran within like 20 days so that you don't run into that 30 day window and then you're getting extra hard increase because the hard increase does drop your score. So for a credit score, you want to make sure that you're at like 620 and above. Um, for conventional, you may want to walk into that 645 and 700 club before you go to the table. But of course, it can be lower. Um, you're just going to be 
with a little bit higher interest, etc. Okay. But when I did my outline for this video, the information that I used for my outline is honestly, as of right now, the filming of this video, it does not apply because FHA has done some amazing stuff. Like I almost cursed because I'm super happy. But number three is do your research. Okay. Before today, um, FHA was not technically ideal for individuals trying to become homeowners with high student loan debt. For myself, I have high student loan debt. They will calculate 1% of my student loans in my DTI. So when I said do research, it was because you needed to make sure that you're going to the correct lender that's not going to um, affect your DTI so much. So for me in the beginning before today and all the news I just found out about FHA, I was going to go do a Fannie, I'm sorry, a Freddie Mac loan because they only counted a half a percent for my student loan. So for easy math, I have $50,000 worth of student loans. Um, well, that's not easy math. That's exactly what it is. But $50,000 worth of uh, student loans at 1% accounted in my DTI for those student loans, that's $500. That's already going to blow me off the water because I already have other debts. Okay. So now, as of now, you guys, FHA has now changed their guidelines to accepting income-based repayment plans. They also accept the pay-as-you-earn plan plans. And if you are not on those income-based repayment plans, then they will only do 0.5%. That is a game changer. You guys, market was already crazy. It's about to be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> because all those people that were getting denied because their DTI was out of the park because of student loans, they are now able to go and go buy a house. You guys jump on this bandwagon while you can. I'm, I'm look next year is happening. I don't care what anybody says I'm doing it and it's getting done. So research what program is best for you. Okay. So number four is getting your savings together. You have to have money to purchase the house. Okay. So let's go ahead and debunk the myth that you need 20% down to purchase a house. It is not like you don't have to have 20% down. Like you don't need it. The 20% down removes the PMI from your loan, which is the private mortgage insurance. It's for the lender. You don't have to use 20% of your own money to buy a house. You can get a house as low as 3%, 3.5%, 5%. You don't need 20%, but you do need to create a good solid plan on how to save up this money and get your earnest money. You're going to need closing cost money. You're going to need um, down payment. If you can't get um, the, if you can't get down payment assistance programs, you're going to need that money. You're going to need moving fees. You need money, child. Don't think you're going to go into this without money. Even if you go through the NACA program, you still need to have money. I was wanting to go through the NACA program before FHA just changed their guidelines, you guys. So I'm leaning towards doing FHA because... NACA, baby, they want your backbone. They want your credit. They want everything. <laughs> and the way the uh, market is right now, you guys, to use their program... It will be really, really strenuous. Um, and honestly, like I'm all for NACA. I'm all for it because they offer no closing costs, no PMI, very, very low interest rates. Like it's the bomb, but they don't have the um, adequate amount of staff to, to get people to the closing table fast enough. And that's just the truth behind it. Like the program is amazing. If you have all of your ducks in a row and you're, you know, to the T, then you're good. You're golden. You'll be able to get things done, but it's just, they're closing too slow and the market is too fast. You know what I mean? So, so I'm leaning towards FHA, you guys. Just kind of piggybacking off of my last video. I just wanted to put that out there. But yes, you need to create a savings plan, boo-boo. All right, so number five is get pre-qualified or pre-approved. Now I want to make it really clear as to what pre-qualified is versus pre-approved. Hold on, I'm gonna put it on the screen so it's very, very clear. Cause I don't want any of my friends out there shopping for a house with a pre-qual. We don't wanna do that because baby girl, you're not really qualified. So let me tell you what a pre-qual is and a pre-approval, okay? Hold on. A pre-qual is just a verbal approval. Verbal. A pre-qual is just a verbal approval. Verbal, okay? That means you applied on the website. You may have done like a two minute phone conversation. And it was like, okay, cool. Yeah, that's good. I think we can get you qualified, blah, 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 blah. It's not anything official it is unofficial okay free qual don't go shopping for no house baby don't do it because you're gonna play yourself and your realtor is gonna be super mad i don't even know why they would waste their time with a pre-qual but whatever nevertheless 
prequel, don't go shopping yet, okay? Okay. Now, sis, a pre-approval. On the other hand, that means we G4 classified, okay? We are, we've submitted documentations, they've done our credit report, they've gotten all of our life information. <laughs> we completed a full application, the mortgage lender went through, crossed all the T's, dotted the I's, all of that stuff, and now you have that big fat number and you can go and look for some houses. We have the number and then of course you still have to go to, through closing and underwriting all that stuff, but with a pre-approval, you're able to start looking for houses, okay? So prior to going to get pre-qualified, pre-approved, you need to get all of your documentation in order, okay? You need your W-2s, you need your 1099s if you're self-employed, you need to have your tax returns, you need your pay stubs, you need your banking information, you need to get all of that good stuff in order so that you can go to the table prepared and ready and that you're not going back and forth trying to figure out, oh, I don't think I have my 2020 tax returns, whatever the case may be. When you do your taxes next year, you guys, keep that stuff in a folder, in a file on your computer or keep it printed out, just have it available, create you a binder so that you don't have to go looking for this stuff get your documentation in order because they're going to need it one more tip i have a bonus tip for you guys while you're in the process of doing this and this is kind of like moving ahead but i just have to say it right now and i'm probably going to say it again in another video do not go and take out any other line of credit until after you have closed on your loan <laughs> reason being is because you go and like oh i'm going to buy some furniture i'm going to take out another i'm going to go buy some furniture and finance it blah 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 baby you just messed up your credit because your dti now has changed you just possibly messed up your approval because now your dti has changed don't go buy that bitly wait till after you close don't go buy that jet ski wait till after you close don't go buy some bundles on payment arrangements <laughs> because you need to wait till after you close like you guys probably get the gist do not buy any huge purchases until you close on your house you guys i can't stress that enough you just have to be patient. You gotta wait, okay? Because trust me, your girl is so ready to go buy that Alfa Romeo Stelvio, okay? I'm so, so ready. It's, it's just calling my name, but I don't really need to. I don't. But anyway, so let's go ahead and recap, you guys. So the number one was your mindset. Get your mindset in order. Get your, Set your intentions. Be serious about this. Don't let anybody sway you. Number two was your credit report. Check your credit report. Make sure that there is nothing on there reporting inaccurately dispute 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 and do not dispute online dispute your information via mail okay don't dispute online you also want to check your dti research make sure that you're going with the best program or lender fha um freddie mac fannie mae usda um va loans make sure you're going with the best one that suits you okay do not let someone else tell you which one to go through to because it's popular fha may not be what you need but i know for me i want an fha loan because i want to do a two or three k they have that for the rehab there are so many different opportunities out there naca they also offer that pro um, program to do a rehab you buy a house that's really really cheap and it's jacked up you can get a rehab loan all wrapped into the mortgage okay those things are available to you so you have to do your research number four create a solid savings plan you can't go splurging buying i'm not even gonna keep saying coffee because y'all look we have to live while we do this but i know i mentioned it but at the end of the day if you budget for it you know my channel is about budgeting if you budget for it and you still saving your money, go for it. But I'm just saying you have to make sure that you have your plan in place on how you're going to get your coins together and get your coins up for your purchase of your house, okay? Number five, and last but not least, was getting pre-qualified or pre-approved. You really want to go for that pre-approved because you don't want to go walking looking for houses and you can't buy it bottom line and then get your documentation in order all right you guys so that is pretty much it for this video i hope that you guys are not drunk by this point because i had to put my wine glass down that was like my third cup <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some valuable information from this if you are not already subscribed to my channel then i don't know what you're waiting on go ahead and click that red subscribe button thumbs up this video and make sure that you turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss the next one i'll catch you guys later peace so we got
Snoop Dogg.